Hey, it's Patrick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to completely disassemble a Harley-Davidson Milwaukee 8 engine. We're gonna be using a 2019 Fat Bob, but this is gonna to apply to any of the Harley-Davidson Touring Bikes from 2017 to present, and any of the Harley-Davidson Softails from 2018 to present, with the only real difference being in the counterbalancers. The Softails are gonna have two counterbalancers, and the baggers are just gonna have one. Otherwise, this is virtually the same process. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, if you're looking to build a hot rod, you're probably going to encounter at least part of this. You may not be going all the way down to the crankshaft like we are, but if you're doing cams, you're doing a big bore, upgrading your cylinder heads, or maybe your fuel system, you're gonna to have to know how to do some of this. For us, we're doing the full Monty. We're doing stroker crank. Big giant cam, big bore, cylinder heads. We're gonna to try to make this the biggest fire-breathing horsepower machine we can put on the street. Figure on this taking you like a full weekend. Don't rush, give yourself two full days to do this on a weekend, and it's gonna help to have some mechanical knowledge. If you've only done light mechanical work, this might not be for you. If you're used to doing mechanical stuff, you'll have no problems. But there are a few considerations, like being able to keep this bike up and down, and preferably up off the ground. The next thing you're gonna need is the ability to block up both the engine and the transmission, whether it be through flat jacks or just blocks, you're gonna need to be able to control those independently. Now for specialty tools, you need a couple of things. You're gonna need a T70 Torx to take the comp sprocket off the primary side, and you're gonna need a jammer bar for the primary. You can either make your own or you can buy the specialty tool. For the cam side, you are gonna need the little sprocket jammer to get those cams out of there. Again, you can buy the specialty one or you can make yourself a little tool to get those sprockets jammed up, to get those off there. Outside of that, you're just gonna need a nice mechanics hand tool set and that'll get the job done. Let's get to work. The oil drain is located on the back of the transmission pan. We need a 5.8 socket. We're gonna get that draining and head over to the other side of the bike and pull the main fuse. So the next thing we need to do is get our fuel system off here. We're gonna start with the throttle body, work our way into the manifold. For the throttle body, we need to unplug the sensor and we have three Allen heads here. You're gonna need a five millimeter Allen for this. Okay, now we need to give ourselves some room because getting this manifold out of here with everything attached to it, it, it'll turn into a fight. So we need to unplug our sensor coming out of the rear cylinder head. We're gonna unplug the sensor in the manifold. And then we're gonna take our fuel line and fuel rail off. You're gonna need a T25 and a T30 for the fuel rail and the fuel line. All right, before we can pull our manifold off, we have to get the coil and the top motor mount out of the way. So we're gonna pull our spark plug wires off. We're gonna use a T25 to take our coil off. There's a plug we'll remove on the backside of that. Then we're gonna need a T47 and a 916 to pull our motor mount off. While we're on the left side of the bike, we wanna loosen our manifold clamp screws right here. These are quarter inch Allens. We don't need to take these all the way out. We're just gonna loosen these. Then we'll go around to the other side of the bike and take the top two out so we can get the manifold completely free of the bike. Okay, the next thing we need to do is get our oil cooler off. And it has a cover on top of it that you're gonna need a T25 Torx for. And then you're gonna have to bend the tab out at the top and get it off the slots. Your cover will be removed. And then underneath that's the oil cooler. There's a feed and a return line, one at the top, one at the bottom. I need some pliers to get those clamps off there and pull those loose. And it's two more screws that you need a T25 for and that oil cooler is gonna come off. So the oil cooler is loose. We're gonna have to lift it up off of these pegs. Give yourself a little bit of room to work that line off the bottom of the oil cooler. Even though we drained the oil out of our motor, I uh, recommend a drain pan because there's still gonna be some residual oil in there. So now we have to get the lines for the oil cooler off the bike. There's going to be a clamp down here you can get off with a set of pliers that goes down to the transmission. Then on the front and rear head, there's gonna be two screws you're gonna need a 3 8 socket for. Pull both of those off.
And then these lines are gonna come off on the right side of the bike. You can't take them the other way, you gotta pull them off to the right. Probably gonna be a little bit messy, so be prepared for some cleanup. Next, we need to get our rocker tops off so we can get into our rocker assembly. So you're gonna need a 7 16 socket, pull out all the bolts, the top should pop right off. Okay, now we need to get our rocker arms out. We're gonna use a 12.516. And the important thing here is you have to like loosen them up evenly. Each bolt on the end kind of has to come up at the same time because there's valve spring pressure on that and you don't want to put it in a bind. So we're gonna go back and forth across the rocker and lift them up off there. Once we get them out of there, we can get the rocker bottoms off the cylinder heads. Okay, now that we have our rocker arms out, we can pull our push rods out of there. We can get our rocker bases removed, but there's a little plastic breather gear in there. Needs a 5 16 Allen, we'll take that out. And then we need a 3 8 socket, pull our four bolts out and our rocker bases will come off and we can get to our cylinder heads. I swear to God, Steve, I'm gonna start using an impact. Before you can get these the rest of the way off, there's one last 7 16 stud right in the center of each rocker box. Okay, before we pull our cylinder heads off, we need to take our knock sensors out. That's a quarter inch Allen. And then there's four head studs, and those are 9 16 12 points. I like to take them off in like an X pattern. Again, I don't really like to take one completely loose than the other one because it kind of warps the head. So I like to X back and forth by loosening those up so the head comes off nice and even. I'm going to the back one. Every time. Now all we have to do is slide our cylinders off of our pistons. Uh, when you do that, make sure you don't let the rod bang against the case if you can. And also, when you get one off, as the other one slides off, it may try to move the crankshaft, so you may have to brace one side and pull the other side off. All right, the next thing we need to do is remove both the inner and outer primary from the other side of the bike so we can get to our engine cases. But to do that, we have to take the starter out and to do that, we have to take the battery out. So we're gonna take a 5.30 second Allen, we're gonna pop our side panel off, remove our battery, So now that the battery is out, 
we have more access to the starter. We're gonna unplug the plug that's on the top of the starter that plugs into the solenoid, and we're gonna take a half inch socket and unplug our positive lead off of the starter. And then we can take our quarter inch ball allens, get those two bolts out of there and slide the whole starter out. So the trick is getting the starter around this bracket. And if you wiggle it around just a little bit, it will move around there. Okay, so we gotta drain the fluid out of our primary. You need a 5 8 wrench or socket for your drain plug. And then we're gonna take our outer primary cover off and we're gonna use a 3 16 Allen for that. Not all these bolts are the same size, so a great way to keep track of where they go is to make you a little cardboard template. Put them in the holes where they go. Okay, so we have to get our inner primary loose, and to do that, we have to take our whole primary drive out of here. So the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our chain tensioner. Now this is under spring tension, so we need to wrap a zip tie around it before we pull these two bolts out of here. You're gonna need a half inch socket to get these out. Then we need some snap ring pliers. We're gonna take this big snap ring off of here, to pull this plate out to get to our clutch hub nut behind here. Okay, now we're ready to take the primary drive off here. I'm gonna have to take the clutch hub nut off and the compensator bolt out of the front. And these dudes are torqued something fierce, like 175 foot pounds in the front and like 80 on the clutch hub nut. So something to note about the clutch hub nut, it's reverse thread. So keep that in mind. It's not left hand Lucy for this one. You gotta go to the right to loosen it up. You're gonna need a T70 for the compensator sprocket, which you may not have. It's kind of a, a really big Torx, but you're gonna need a T70 and an inch and 3 16 socket for the clutch hub nut. The other thing you're gonna need is some sort of little jammer bar to put in between the sprockets to make sure nothing turns while you're trying to loosen this up. You can buy a tool or you can just make one out of a piece of metal, but you're gonna need to be able to jam those sprockets and then get the biggest breaker bar you can and let's go to work. Do this on a flannel shirt. We take the rest of the compensator off. It's good to keep these plates in order. So now we need to get this inner primary piece out. To do that, we need to take these five bolts out and you need a half inch ratchet. All right, so we have a few more things to do before we can hop back over to the other side of the bike. We need to take the rotor off here, and that's just gonna pull right off. Be careful, because it is magnetized, so it's gonna wanna like slam back down and pinch your fingers. As far as the stator goes, you don't really need to take that off. To pull that plug through, it's gonna damage the plug, and you're gonna have to replace the whole stator. So unless you plan on replacing that stator, I just leave it in there and disassemble the motor, leaving it on there. Next, need a half inch wrench and an Allen. Get this off. And then we'll need a T47. We'll pull this foot control off. We'll get that stuff off. We'll hop over to the other side, get those pistons out of there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull these pistons off these rods. If you were doing a complete teardown and doing a crankshaft, it doesn't really matter. You can leave those pistons on those rods. I'm just gonna pop the wrist pin clips out, pull the wrist pins out, pull the pistons off. After that, 
We're gonna pull the tappet block covers off and the cam cover off using a 3 16 Allen to give us access to the tappets and the cam chest. We can pull all that stuff out of there. On the top, you get the tappets out. We have to take these cuffs off. You're gonna need a 3-8 socket to get these bolts out of here. Be very careful, these things have been known to break off, so be careful taking those out. Then we're gonna come down here, we use a T27 to get our cam chain tensioner out. And then you need to have something to jam these sprockets up. They make a tool for it. Basically anything that's not gonna tear up the sprocket, you just need to be able to hold them still. And there's a half inch and a 9 16th to break loose. Once you have them loose, it comes right off. And then we're gonna use a 3 16 Allen to pull our cam plate out. And when we pull that cam plate out, the cam and everything's gonna come right out with it and we'll empty out our cam chest. And then I'm gonna take this control off and the brake master cylinder, and that's gonna be a T47 and a quarter inch Allen. I'm just gonna move those down so they're out of the way, and this is all cleared out for us when we're ready to move this out of the way. I gotta unplug this. Unplug your crank sensor, unplug your oil pressure sensor, and unplug the voltage regulator. Okay, now before we can get our crankcase out, we actually have to make a little room in here. We have to move our transmission back a little bit. So to do that, we're gonna take our rear wheel off. I'm gonna drain the oil out of the crankcase because there's gonna be some residual oil in there. I don't want that in there when I go splitting the cases. So you're gonna need a quarter inch Allen for your drain plug. And then we'll brace up both the transmission and the engine case. It can be blocks, flat jacks, whatever. Brace those up because you're gonna be taking them loose and you don't want them to fall down or get into a bind. And then we're gonna pull the swing arm pivot, which is actually the rear mount for the transmission. And that's a three quarter inch Allen over an inch and an eighth socket on the other side. Before we can get the swing arm pivot shaft out, take this pinch bolt out that's hidden up in the frame. I need a T45 to get that out of there. That should give us enough room to move this transmission case back a little bit. If for some reason that doesn't give you enough room, you can take your lower shock bolt off and that'll loosen up the swing arm all the way. It'll free it up and you'll be able to move it a long way. So the next thing I'm gonna do is on the left side of the engine, on the lower engine mount, I'm gonna take an 11 16th and take that nut loose. And then I'm gonna take a half inch, take our four bolts out at each corner of the engine case here. And then we're gonna slide the transmission back a little bit. Take a 3 16th Allen, loosen up our pinch bolt, pull our front motor mount out. And then pick the engine up out of the frame so we can split the cases. We're gonna lay this down on the cam side and then there's a bunch of half inch bolts. We're gonna take them out in a crisscross pattern. I just like to do that. And then once those are out, we can split the cases. They're not just gonna pop right apart. There's a bonding agent in between there, and it's gonna take some work to move those apart. What you don't wanna do is drive a screwdriver or something in between there and possibly damage the face of those case halves. You can have a leak later on. The other thing to remember is you want the flywheel and the counterbalancers to stay down in the other side, the right side case half, and just pull that case half off. Okay, before we take the balancers out, uh, we have to do something. Now these balancers are actually a split gear, meaning there's two gears in here like this, and they're spring-loaded. 
What you don't want to do is just pull this out of here and then the gear on the bottom springs back. So uh, Harley has a special tool that they use to put in these holes. If you just use like a number one square bit, it'll do the same trick. So take a screwdriver and kind of spring that bottom gear over and then drop the tool through both holes. And then now we can lift this right out of here. Also mark your balancers front and rear so they go back in the same location. There you have it, one completely disassembled Milwaukee 8 engine. It's not too bad, you can definitely tackle this in your garage with a handful of specialty tools, but now comes the fun part. We get to start putting this thing back together and you can follow along with our engine series as we tackle it piece by piece. We're gonna put a stroker crank in this, we're gonna put a big bore in it, we're gonna do gear drive cams, cylinder head upgrades, fuel system upgrades, and we're gonna show you how to do it every step of the way. And at the end, we're actually gonna take this back to the dyno and show you the difference between our stock motor dyno results and our stroker motor dyno results. As always, if you have any questions, you can drop us a comment or you can reach out to our customer service team. They would love to talk to you about your motorcycle, your riding style, and your budget. I'm Patrick, go work on those motorcycles.